السلام عليكم السلام عليكم مستر بي افرا I can't believe I'm I'm um, I'm live streaming with you افرا oh, uh, someone سهلاً. called me someone called me and my... no problem no I got problem. confused where where are you joining us from Mr B I'm MB from um, San Francisco California All right, San Francisco, California. Yes. All right. So, what what's what's your what, what is it? What does the M stand for? MB. What's the? Oh, it's called uh, Mehram. Mehram. It's like Mehram. There's a Turkish word called Bayram, so it's similar. All right. Is that your name, Mehram? Yes, it is. All right. Mashallah. So, Mehram, ahlum sahlan man. Welcome and. What's she, what's on preoccupying your precious thoughts? Well, first of all, I, I would like to say uh, thank you for what you're doing, Shukran, and uh, my heart is pounding because I can't believe I'm I'm um, I'm talking to you. <laughs> it's an honor, it's a pleasure, man. It's an honor. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Shukran. Shukran. Uh, you, you you actually you you turn my uh, world um, 360 degrees or 180. because um i was at this point in my life where um things didn't make much sense and i felt lost and for some reason youtube recommended you um wow <laughs> at the beginning at the beginning i couldn't i couldn't believe what i was hearing yeah and uh, i think i listened to you for a while and i stopped i'm like no this it cannot be and i came back and a lot of things made sense and uh you put me on on a new trajectory in my life and uh, I am very oh. grateful for that. So uh, my question for uh, this stream is, so it seems like uh, in, our, in our faith, we are guided by, uh, by fear, by love, mm. by hope. And I feel like yeah. in my life, I had, I had experienced many of those stages. And uh, yeah. I wanted to ask you, how do you manage to balance those three guiding uh, feelings in your faith? That's the first question. And the second yeah. question is, uh, do you have any practical advice or practices you would recommend to uh, manage um, ADD or ADHD that would help us, uh, uh, yeah, in the real world? Thank you. Sure, no, no, much love. I dearly appreciate your kind words, uh, Mirban. So, oh, sorry, Miram. Miram. Sorry, Miram. Sorry, yes. Miram. Bayram, yes. Bayram, Miram. Yeah, all right. Uh, <clears throat> wow. So, yeah. Um, so, just coming to those. So, first of all, I mean the uh, the the ADD. Uh, just just going because I think you, I take it you're taking professional help anyway. In in that, are you taking professional help? No, I'm not. I'm no. just personally asking you. Have you ever? Um... Do you, is, do you do yourself experience that or do you have any practical advice someone can use hmm i think it's on these things it depends on what kind of to what level of uh, um i don't know whether it's disruption or wh- or how difficult is it making things um because a lot of people especially if they're slightly older i don't know how your age but maybe they've not been kind of diagnosed or statemented as a kid they've not been kind of so now they're just discovering that i think i have add i think you know i struggle because some people who have it they will often just have like a constant um like kind of uh scatter brain constantly but simultaneously some people can seem to zero in at the same time and focus on something that they get so locked into it and some people can't at all they they just constantly uh like they need if something isn't kind of so gripping it's just gone the attention is like it's somewhere else and, exactly. and it's somewhere else and to a great extent okay i think to a, to a to a reasonable extent sorry this is also normal for for most people i think to a to some, to a reasonable extent we are all gripped by something gripping and then the mind wonders especially in an age where we constantly have 10 second kind of i don't know video clips and 10 second snapchats and whatever they are just 30 second insta clips and so where we are constantly being fed and engaged with uh, you know 
tools that are so psychologically sophisticated to grip our attention, the not so engaging becomes more difficult to engage us because we're kind of so, um, you know, kind of almost drugged up on these things in this day and age that, so this is why it's more difficult to read a book because exactly. you know, it's, I it's a lot not as, it's, it's not, it's not as, you know, it's not as entertaining as watching something because we can just easily watch. We can easily, and so I think we all, to some extent, suffer, obviously some more than others. And then it doesn't mean that everybody who suffers from this has ADD or ADHD, whether it's hyperactive or not. But I would say that, look, for, for that kind of stuff, definitely do, if it's getting, if it's disruptive, uh, speak to a professional um, because it, it, you know, these kind of things. It could be that maybe it's just nothing. It could be that, you know, people can can kind of guide you at least with a professional, constructive, long term kind of vision. But coming to your other question, um, you see, on emotions, it is true that look, we are guided with um, a lot of emotions, especially with religion. There's fear. There's uh, love, compassion, um, well, hope. Okay, so, yeah, hope. Uh, there's, um, yeah. So th people would say, look, uh, you know, you can. People would say, look, try to balance it out. Try to have, you know, there's always. The way I see things, is that yes, Islam provides, you know, the it gives you all of these, it kind of taps into all of these emotions because the emotions exist. It needs to tap into them. And different people work differently. So I would say that it's not a, you see, to me, it's not that, um, it's not the same fit for everyone. Some people may say the same fit fits all. It's just one size fits all mm -hmm. for me i my kind of way is that it would be it's it needs to be tailored to your temperament and personality mm. so if you are a person that you see you are reckless you are completely you know careless and you are just you can even be destructive and you can be then maybe honing and zeroing in more on this thing of this caution this fear this thing of these things need to speak to you because you you know you're leaving a trail of you know debris and ruin in your wake like there's a lot of harm that you are maybe doing to yourself maybe you're doing it to other people this needs to kind of shout out more at you it needs to kind of you need to kind of front that up but if you are someone that no your personality it needs this element of love it needs this side of hope, of inspiration, of the positivity. And I would say a lot of people, actually, especially today, this is what they are in need of. Um, maybe not everyone, but I would argue a lot. So these are the things that you need to really zero in on. These are the things that matter, that love, the compassion, the hope, the inspiration, the positivity. Um, because... You see, some people, like let's say you are someone, your temperament does not work well with the fear side of things. You could, it could be devastating. So you, so you get some people who start to take religion seriously. Like let's say some might have been Muslim, some might be new Muslim, but they start to take religion seriously all of a sudden. And they have a very kind of OCD personality. Mm -hmm. And then they zero in on this fear. And so what happens is they get really obsessive and th their life becomes like they get really, things become highly disruptive. Mm 
So there's actually a category now, you'll find it in, I believe, the DSM as well for um, kind of psychological disorders called religious OCD. It's like a separate OCD. So what happens, these people become debilitated, like they think, oh, my God, I come into sin. Oh, no, oh, my God, I never did this properly. You know, I'm going to get I'm going to get punished now. I'm going to get punished. I better I better do it again. I better do it again. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, I'm going to burn in hell. I'm going to burn in hell. And. And they they live this very. In fact, I work with some some you know some clients who I, I do my one to one perspective sessions through Patreon with some who are unfortunately they've suffered that, and you see how their lives have been turned upside down. I mean, they, they, alhamdulillah, they they kind of combating it and coming out of it now, but but their lives had been turned upside down it was because they you see once it creeps in and it locks because it's this thing like like let's say i say well okay if you don't pray you're gonna burn in hell okay okay but i'm praying but okay uh my prayer i don't think i think i missed a part so okay this prayer is invalid therefore i'm still gonna burn in hell okay so i need to redo the prayer uh i did the oh, oh, oh i'm gonna burn in hell you know th th if i do this i'm gonna see everything becomes that they they can't even they, they they can't escape the grip it kind of really locks in on them and it suffocates them and their whole religion their whole thing their life is unfortunately um so somebody just said um I believe the term is uh, scrupulosity. Sure, scrupulosity. But this thing in general, you'll see that their whole lives become a like a misery. Like they are so, you know, these poor people, they, they're trying to, they're actually doing good things, but they're just so overwhelmed by this anxiety of like, like oh my god you know if i just have to make it out of this world uh you know so i don't and that to me is not at all what islam came for to make your life like that and that is not by the way how the prophet lived and i get it that the that these people are actually trying to do a lot of good things but they but it's it's kind of they're doing, but it's it's kind of caught them the wrong way, though. So, like, it's it's made them very miserable people. I had a person say to me, honestly, this is, he said to me that, and and in the most sincerest of ways, he, that he resented that he'd ever embraced Islam because this is what it like. His life before was 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 fine. Like now it turned into this, this un, never ending series, this chain of just anxiousness of God is going to punish like uh, this isn't right. That isn't right. That isn't. Oh, my God. And, and he wasn't like that before. So this is why I do always encourage, especially in this part of the world, uh, where people live, where they already have enough rules in life. I do feel that, and in our age, that the message generally, for a lot, especially a lot of people I encounter, it should be always about love. It should always be about hope. It should always be about positivity, that we already have enough rules. And usually these people coming already have, that I engage with, usually already have a reasonable uh, grasp of ethics. So it's not, you know, they're not, out there doing cruel things and doing that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's my take on it, man. But may Allah make it easy. May Allah make well, it thank easy. you so much. Thank you so much, Mufti. I'm not going to hold you anymore. Thank you so much. Shukran, man. Thanks you for take doing care. this. I really right. appreciate what you do. And you're Shukran, a legend. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> you are a much legend, love, Mufti. Man. <laughs> you are a legend. We love oh, you. Thank man. You. Thank you, man. Thank I love you too, man. Shukran. People, right? MB right there from San Francisco. Much appreciated. Honestly, these.